Well, happy Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. Uh, today, we're going to be going over the Holy Spirit's gifts. Um, it's another semi-marathon session, so another mini sermon for you, uh, because we're doing 1 Corinthians, the entire chapter 12. It's about 31 verses, but it's, it's really a really good one today. Um, doesn't mean the other ones aren't, but this is really good because it, it not only uh, will cover uh, your success spiritually, but also uh, it, it'll capture some of the other success areas in your life uh, as you go through and kind of uh, take this message and, and, and transpose it to those other areas. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, right on the right here, you can follow along if, if you want to. Uh, but now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to the mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. And there are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one in the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually just as he wills. For even as the body is one and yet many members, and all the members of the body though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it's not for the reason any less part of the body, and if the ear says, because I'm not an eye, I'm not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked. So that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desire the greater gifts, and I'll show you still uh, more, a more excellent way. 
And going into the uh, devotional here, uh, it clarifies some of that because some of it kind of get confusing. But I think when you when you look at your life and look at what you're doing and your your gifts, you can you can realize just in the fact uh, that the analogy of the body, for instance, uh, you know, you can be going through and all of a sudden you think you're you're feeling great and you don't may not put much put, put much uh, emphasis on a finger or a toe or something small. But I tell you what, one of those gets injured and all of a sudden it's a big deal. You realize how important that that individual small member of your body was. And so that's kind of what he's talking about, that uh, uh, the, the entire body has function and, and is more important. You can see that in organizations. You can see that in families. Uh, so just kind of put that in context of, of the church as well. So looking into any healthy church and what you and you'll find believers who are actively serving the Lord as well as some who are not. But Christ's church was never meant to resemble a sporting event with a few participants on the field and many spectators in the stands. Although some may be involved, uninvolved because of apathy, there are many Christians who just feel inadequate. But a believer's limitations are no excuse because God has provided everything we need to serve successfully. On our own, Every one of us is ill-equipped because human strength and talent are insufficient for service to God. Therefore, the Lord has given each of us specific divinely empowered abilities called spiritual gifts to use in doing the work of Christ. We can't choose for ourselves what our gift will be. This is the prerogative of the Holy Spirit. He alone knows exactly what he wants to accomplish and enables each of us accordingly. The Spirit's gifts are to be used for the common good of the church. Though given to us, they're intended for the benefits of others. Our responsibility is to start serving, and in doing so, we will begin to discover how unified the body of Christ really is. Okay, well, there you are. So I guess your kind of challenge for today is to, to, to seek out what those spiritual gifts are that, uh, that the Holy Spirit is blessed you with and how you can utilize those. Okay, so that's something to think about today. And then uh, we've got Bible in one year continuing, uh, Isaiah 54 through 57. And for those of you uh, doing that, yes, Isaiah does end. <laughs> it is a huge book. Uh, you got in on the tail end of it, so you really got in on the more hopeful end of it. But you'll notice that there are 66 chapters in Isaiah, and there's 66 books of the Bible. And, and so Isaiah is really kind of laid out like a mini Bible, where the first 39 chapters are, are, are primarily Old Testament, uh, judgment upon judgment. Uh, I call it you know, the woe is me section. Uh, and then uh, the last uh, uh, 27 chapters, or like the last 27 chapters, the 27 chapters in the New Testament, right? Uh, and it's more about hope and about the second coming and um, a Messiah uh, coming, those types of things. So that's where you are right now uh, in the hopeful portion. Uh, so that's an exciting part to be. Uh, not to say that the first part isn't, but the first part is, is really a, a, a lot of lot of context in the Old Testament. So, and you'll get back around that in a year, right? Because you'll be there. Okay. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you have a, a wonderful day. Uh, get out there. we got some beautiful sunshine here in Virginia. All the storms have passed. So uh, get out there and enjoy the day. And we will talk to you tomorrow.